This tutorial is the first in a series of tutorials that are going to showcase tunnel books. And for this first one, I am going to show you how to construct a tunnel book that is steampunk themed. A tunnel book is just a series of pages with openings cut in the middle. The front page is going to have the largest opening with each of the openings in the following pages being smaller and smaller and smaller until the last page is solid. Now the number of pages is up to you, um, probably at least four pages. Um, and then of course, depending on the size you're doing, you can have more pages because you can accommodate uh, more, uh, cutting more smaller and smaller and smaller holes. If you're working with really small openings, then you really can't uh, get that many pages. So what I'm working with here is six pages, and um, what that does is give you this kind of tunnel effect as you look through the book. And you can use any shape you want. There's no, there's no rule on what it should be. It can be a circle, it can be a square, um, an oblong, and here with this particular book I'm working with an arch. Now you can certainly cut your own holes in chipboard if you like, but for the purposes of this project and to make doing this easy, uh, I'm working with a pre-cut uh, set of pages that are sold by Alpha Stamps and um, the overall dimensions of the outside are 8x8. Eight eight. If you decide that you want to cut your own pages, what you want to do is use chipboard um, so that you've got something sturdy and then you want to decide what the size of your first hole is going to be and just make sure that you don't cut the hole so large that there aren't, that there isn't enough support around the hole. Uh, so that you don't cut it too close to the edges of whatever the size of page you're going to have. And you can get a sense of this by looking at the, the pre-cut one that I have now. Now, I, I would think if you want to do a circle or something like that, you could probably uh, cut it just a little bit wider, but I wouldn't get too much wider. And then you want to think of what difference in sizes do you want as you cut the successive pages. So let's say, for instance, whatever your first hole is, let's say it's four by four. Um, then maybe your next hole, you'll reduce that by a half an inch or a quarter of an inch. And um, you might want to reduce it, uh, if you've got a whole lot of pages, maybe a smaller amount as you go back. Um, if you've uh, only got a few pages, you might choose a larger amount. So then each, each hole after that will be, uh, let's say, half an inch smaller or a quarter of an inch smaller, whichever you choose. And then from that point back until the last page is solid. Now the first thing that I do is create some spines. Since there are six pages, you will need five spines. And I'm making the spines out of very thin chipboard. Of course, you could use a cardstock, and if you're doing a very small book, you could probably get away with cardstock, but when you're doing something this large, and it's gonna have a lot of embellishments and paper and whatnot, you might need something a little bit heavier. And so the, the uh, measurements, of course, the height is the height of the book, eight inches. And then the uh, width that I'm cutting out has to do with, first of all, needing enough surface area to glue one page to the next, and then also having a separation between the pages that's wide enough to accommodate all the stuff that I'm gonna put inside. And there's another thing too, that the wider that is, the easier your book will just stand up all by itself. And so what I chose to do is cut pieces that were two inches wide by eight inches long, that gives me a half an inch on each side and a center area that will be the actual spine you will see of one inch. And the first thing I do is mark off those, um, those dimensions and then I take an X-Acto knife and a ruler and lay it on those lines that I've marked and very gently score a line in. So you don't wanna cut all the way through the chipboard, you just want to make just a little bit of a score in that and that will help you fold the chipboard. Now here you can see all of the chipboard scored and then folded. And the next, um, you wanna go ahead and add whatever paper you want to do on the outside. Of course, you could also paint if you prefer, but I'm using paper. And the paper that I'm using for this is this uh, beautiful paper pad that you see here that is steampunk themed. And of course, that works perfectly for the steampunk project. And it comes in a package of 12 by 12 sheets. They're double-sided. So one side has a lot of designs on it and the other side has um, a pattern on it. And now after I get done doing that, then I want to put some paper on the inside. And that's the part that you're going to see once the pages are together. You don't really need to add paper to the tabs that are going to be used to glue the two pages together. So if you just cut enough paper to go in that little one inch slit, 
um, or area that's going to be the spine, then that's all you really need to do. Now I'm ready to go ahead and start assembling the book and adding the spines to all the pages. And the first thing that I'm going to do is the front page. I'm going to go ahead and add the paper to that page because I'm not gluing the spine to the front, I'm gluing it to the back side. And it's so much easier to put the paper on before you put the spine on. Now, once we get into the inside of the book, you're going to have to paper after the fact because you're going to want to cover the tab that you use to attach the spine to the book. So here you can see that I've attached the first spine, that I've glued it on the back side of the front page, and then, um, yes, yeah, so you can see here, then you can see that I've already decorated the front side. And then once I'm done with that, then I go ahead and paper the inside of the front page. And you can see here how it nicely covers the tab that I use to attach the page to the spine. Now that I've got the spine attached to the first page on the inside, and I've covered it with paper, so now that first page has papered on the front and the back, and the tab that I use to attach it to the spine is covered up by that paper. Now I'm going to take the other side of the spine and attach it to the second page. And you can see that here. So you can see um, the other side of the tab is now glued onto that second page that has the hole that's just a little bit smaller than the first page. And now that I've done that, I can do exactly the same thing as I did on the first page. I can go ahead and paper that and that will cover that tab. And then I'm just gonna continue in the same fashion. Now I'll, I will go to the back side of the second page and attach the next spine and then cover it with paper and continue. Now, at this point, I wanna mention something. Uh, you see that I'm attaching paper as I go. You could also choose to embellish as you go. Um, I'm not doing it that way only because I kind of feel like since I'm using some dimensional embellishments, that as I'm assembling it, it might um, it might damage the pages as I'm trying to work with it and cut away paper from the holes in the middle and that kind of thing. So if I was just going to apply paper to each of the pages uh, in, in terms of decorative things, then I might do it as I go, but I just felt like it worked better to go ahead and attach the spines, cover everything with paper, and then once everything was assembled and I had all six pages and the five spines together, then I would go about um, embellishing the inside, the back and fronts of all the pages. Now you can see a view of the book all assembled and each of the pages are attached with a spine and all of the pages are covered with paper. And then uh, the next thing here, you can see what it looks like viewing it from the spine. So you see the spine all put together and you can see the alternating papers that I used for each one of the spines. And here is a view looking at it from the front through looking at the tunnel view of the book. So now the next part of this is to start planning. And that's probably one of the most important parts after you go ahead and assemble this is that you, you not only want to decorate the pages, but you want things on the page behind the next page to peek through in the tunnel. You don't want to completely cover up the opening in the tunnel, but you want to have things um, just peeking out as you go through. And you need to think about doing it looking through the tunnel going front ways and also looking at the tunnel going the other way as you open the book and you look back uh, towards the front. Um, so uh, one of the things you might want to consider is that uh, you may have to do double images, like do a reverse image and back one image with, with the, the, the reverse of that same image. Um, or you might need to paint the back or however it works in terms of the types of things that you're going to use. And of course, I'm going to walk you through everything that I did and why I decided to do, to do it that way. So that's, that's kind of also the thing. It's not just that you're looking through this tunnel, but you're also seeing peaks of things uh, that are on each page going backwards and then forwards. And then you might want something very interesting at the very end of the tunnel. In terms of embellishing the book, I really used about four different elements. One was working out how to dress up the arch area. And then in terms of images, I used images from collage sheets. And then also, as I had mentioned earlier, this paper pack has a lot of really beautiful images on it. And so I cut some of those images out to use as well. And then the dimensional elements, um, I made some things out of clay using rubber molds. And then of course, metal bits and then some die cut chipboard shapes. The first new collage sheet is called Steampunk People. And these are people who are dressed in Victorian clothing, but I've added a steampunk twist to all of them. 
And so what I did is I cut all these images out and I printed multiple versions of them. And if you look in the second picture here, what I've done is I have cut out the whole image and then I cut out pieces of the other images and then glued them on top of the main image. So that way parts of their clothing or their steampunk hat or face mask or whatever, it sticks up and gives it more of a dimensional look. I think you can kind of see that in the picture, but when, of course when you see it for real, it really does uh, look nice. And so uh, just think of the things that would be forward if you were looking at some somebody and they were dressed. So like a bodice would be on top of the on top of a, uh, a blouse. So you maybe just cut out the bodice and the neck piece on the first one on the left, the guy, the next guy with the face mask. That, I just did the face mask again and put that on top. And then the lady, I did her hat and her a suitcase. And then the guy with the wings, I did his wings, his suitcase, and then his uh, jet pack on the back. And then I just continued through the other ones doing their hats, uh, pieces of their clothing, and then like the steampunk arms, that sort of thing. The next one is Steampunk Doors, and there is a collage sheet and a digital image set. The digital image set obviously has more pictures in it because I can I don't have to worry about the size of a, of a regular piece of paper. And I followed the same process of printing it multiple times and then put uh, gluing using a double stick tape or whatever, pop dots, whatever you happen to have, um, to pop up all as, as many pieces as I could. And then also, um, for the one on the right where you see dials and things, gauges, I also use a little glossy accents on top of those to make them look a bit, little bit domed and shiny as if there was glass there. And then you're going to see me use these uh, as I dress up the, uh, the openings of the tunnel book. And these are all sized to work with the tunnel book and they also work with any of the oh, 112 scale projects that you've seen me do before. Now the next three sheets um, are called Voyages Extraordinaire and these are uh, some sheets that I did a while ago but they all had some elements on them that I wanted to use um, for this project. Uh, for example on the first sheet here you see the entrance that says Voyages Extraordinaire. That worked really well with one of the openings in the book. Um, and then there's other little bits and bobs on these uh, sheets that I used and there are three in the set. They're all different. But then there's also a, a digital set that has everything in it, huge, that has all the stuff on the three sheets plus stuff. And then here, just as a quick picture to show you how I've used that archway, and then some other little elements. And just like with the people and the doors, I printed this multiple times and cut out pieces of it and then pop them up so that you get more of a dimensional look. Now this guy is in that big digital kit, and here's an example of both cutting this out multiple times and layering, but then also adding a bunch of actual metal pieces. So uh, the gears that you're seeing, those are all metal. And then if you look in the middle there, you see um, a, a, a uh, one with two round things that look like they're kind of stuck together. That's actually a bicycle charm. So it's kind of on its uh, at an angle. So it's got the big wheel, the little wheel in the back, and then the handle going up. So you know, you can use things um, that kind of have a look and you mix it up with other things and you would never know that was a bicycle charm. It, it looks like it's just a piece of uh, a mechanical equipment. Next, I have a collage sheet, an old one called Up, Up and Away. And it's a collage sheet and a digital kit. And um, obviously the digital kit has more. The It has all the balloons that you see on the collage sheet. The collage sheet just has different sizes and then a few more. And this was perfect scale for uh, this eight by eight book and it, it went really well with the designs that were already on the paper. Um, next, I have a series of new hardware sheets and this is stuff is great for any project. Um, the sizing works well with a, a project of this size, a book of this size, or if you were doing some kind of collage sheet or altered project of the size of this eight by eight or maybe even a little bit bigger. And the first one has just got a whole bunch of uh, back plates and knobs and knockers. And then the next one is just tons of hinges. There's two of each kind and they, um, every kind of color and shabbiness and style. And then the next one is all kinds of keyholes, uh, loaded with keyholes, a couple of different sizes. Most of them, there are two sizes of them. And then there's a digital kit that has all of that in it plus more. Now, um, if you're not familiar with digital kits, it's just instead of getting it printed on a collage sheet, they're individual images. And the nice thing about that is that you can print only what you want. Um, and you can save on paper, plus you can change the size of them. And then you hear me talk about flipping images so that when you see the image from both sides, 
you you uh, you don't see just the white back. You, you get to see the image both ways. Well, you can flip these things if they're in separate uh, in separate uh, files. Now you don't have to have a fancy you know software to do this. If you've got Microsoft Word, that's all you need because you can copy and paste these images in Word and then just print out a sheet of them and just print the ones you want and print them the way you want. And Microsoft Word allows you to very easily flip an image or get a hold of the anchor uh, that the, that's on the box around the image and just pull it and it will make it bigger or push it up and it will make it smaller. Then there's a mini set. I thought, well, while I'm doing all this, I might as well go ahead and make a mini set that's got everything in it. Now this would be scaled for a 112 project. So if you were doing miniatures, um, then and you wanted something for your doors and hinges and things like that, this would work really well size-wise. Now I talked earlier about the paper pack and, and how gorgeous it is and, and how many images are on it. And this gives you a better view of what the, what's in the papers. And so you can see there's beautiful designs, plus there's lots and lots of images. So um, I use this both to cover each of the pages. Uh, in some cases, I just use the sheet. In some cases, I cut out parts of it and collaged it on. Um, and then on some of those, I actually use cut out the individual images. But there's just tons of beautiful stuff on this, and they're all double-sided. And then here, this gives you a good example. Now, see, I used one of the sheets here that had um, that had the map on it and the train comes from another sheet so I cut that out and then I've added metal pieces to it. I've added uh, the, the gears that you see down below. I've also added an image of a porthole with a conductor that comes off of one of those Voyages Extraordinaire sheets and then you can see around that opening one of the strategies I use for dressing those up is if you go back and look at uh, up at the left hand corner you see these little uh, these little framed images I use those frames and so I cut out the stuff in the middle and then cut the frame down a little bit to, to fit the uh, opening and I did the same thing on the front and the back and then one of the clocks that's on the sheet at the bottom I cut it in a in a, in a uh, arch so that it completely covered the opening and then of course with all these images and the book itself I did a lot of inking and what I did in this case is I used Distress Ink. I either used the Vintage Photo or the Black Soot, depending on the color of the image and what worked well uh, for that. And when I'm working on a project where something is a little shabbier and rougher looking, then I like to use the Distress Ink. Otherwise, if I just want to um, just go along the edges with, with something to just uh, cover up the edge, the white you know, that, you, that you see of the paper, then I usually use um, either like a little Sharpie or I might use a calligraphy pen because they have those really fine tips. And I'll just go around the image and just you know, uh, frame that. So it just depends. I'll, I'll usually go one way or the other. But in this case, I use the stress ink. On the front page of the book, I have added some trim around the opening, uh, the, the striped trim that you see, and that was just some of the paper that I cut off uh, that was a border on the 12 by 12 paper pad. And then I also took some of the um, images of gears and whatnot and shaped those around the top of the arch. And then to add just a little bit more dimension, I went ahead and added uh, some metal gears. And then also I was using this mold, you'll see me use that in several places, um, that has a bunch of gears and also some keys. And so I did a combination of the two and I think when you mix them, it, the, the metal ones kind of elevate the clay ones so the clay ones look a little bit more like they're actual metal. And then on top of the sides there where you see the striped paper, I also cut out some more images the, with the clocks and the, and the little, um, I guess it's a little date thing. And I used a little glossy accents on the top of the clocks just to make them pop. And then from uh, the Up, Up and Away collage sheet, I also added some of the balloons and I popped those up just a little bit. And then you see one of the steampunk people, the guy with the mask at the bottom. Now looking at the back of the first page, um, you can see actually on the top of the first page, you also had that Voyages Fantastics. It's actually on two different pages in the paper pack, so that was great because it allowed me to put them on both sides of the paper. You see another one of the balloons from the collage sheet, and you see one of the steampunk uh, women. And then at the top underneath the sign, I also have added just a little bit of um, gears and stuff that I cut out of the paper, and then I actually used a metal gear on top of that. And I did that for two reasons. One is I wanted it to overlap what you see on the first page, so that way, either way, you see gears. Now moving on to the second page, the front of the second page, you can see a very elaborate gate or window. That's made from a die-cut chipboard piece that was sized to fit the second window here. 
And um, you can see on the left, uh, I've got a handle and I jazzed up that handle by putting some gears behind it and uh, putting a little uh, brad on top. And then I hung a chain and up to the top. So I wanted it to kind of look like it was maybe mechanical. And at the top left, you can see a whole bunch of gears. You see a clock hand, you see a key. Now that key is another one of those things that was made from the mold that I talked about from the first page. And so uh, on the side here, you can see that I have added hinges and that way you can open and close this. And just to give the, the door or window a little bit more support, I actually used some of the paper images of hinges from the collage sheet and I put those on top. So that really just get, makes it a, a larger area of contact for that so that it will hold it in place. And then if you look at the broader area, I've got some clocks at the top that are that have been collaged and they they hang over the opening. So you're going to be able to see that little bit of clock from either looking from the back forward or the forward back. And then you see the, um, the there's a little balloon on the left side that came from the paper. You see my little steampunk guy. And then you just see a little metal piece that I folded over the top of the page. On the back of the second page at the top, again, you can see the clocks that I've collaged and I made sure that they, uh, they overlap exactly the same from the front and the back so that you don't see any of the back of the clocks, the, just the white paper. Then I also added again a balloon from on the right side above my steampunk lady. Um, that came from an image on the paper and then you see a steampunk guy on the right side or, or excuse me, the left side. And then of course you can see through the gate and you can see the back side of that and the chain and a little bit of the mechanics on that. On the front of the third page is the big opening um, with the with the Voyages Extraordinaire entryway that we, we talked about earlier that I showed you earlier. And now I've also added some of the other elements. I've got the steampunk lady. I've got a couple of balloons, another metal bit folded over the page. I, I did this metal bit folded over all of the inside pages. And then you see the steampunk guy on his bicycle. We talked about that earlier. And then the flights departing daily and the ticket booth and all those are all popped up and then of course earlier I talked about how I jazzed up the guy's bike with all kinds of metal bits and whatnot. On the back side of that third page you can see um, I, I mirrored the entryway. I've added another it says luft I think it means lift or air or something like that and then I've got my little crow guy here with his with his hat and his clock and then everything behind that is basically just the paper. I didn't collage any other elements on top of that. And of course, as you're, as you're looking through this going from the back, now you can get that back tunnel view where you're going from something smaller to something bigger. So again, the guy, if you notice, I had to uh, flip his image and use a little bit of him to cover up the backside of him that you would have seen had I not done that, that was on the page in front. So you really don't have to have the whole image, you just have to cover the back with whatever amount of image is going to actually be seen through the opening. And notice as I'm going through, I'm trying not to completely cover the opening. I'm just adding little elements that just sort of go over the edges of the opening so that you can kind of see that. And that, that, that creates um, a three, more of a 3D look as you're looking through and you're seeing things that protrude over that opening. Now the fourth page, the centerpiece, is one of the steampunk doors, and we I showed you how I popped all that up. And again, I've added hinges to this, and then I covered the hinges with the paper hinges again, just like the gate in the front to give it more support. And then this also opens so that you can open this up and continue to look through. So when you're displaying the book, you can either have this open so that you don't see that and you can continue to look all through the back, or you can have this closed. And then also you see my steampunk guy next to that. Now, when you actually open it up and look at the opening, you'll notice that I have trimmed the opening with the outside of the door. So I printed that image uh, twice more to get that outside area. And I do a flip version of that on the other side so that you don't, you know, that they look the same as you look through. And then um, to jazz up the edges of that and to cover some of the paper that you would have seen because it wasn't completely covered with the entire door, I just cut out pieces of the hinges and you'll see the spiral looking piece on the on the left and the right and then there's another piece below that. That's just little pieces of the hinges and that way it gave me a solid area because that door kind of curves in. You don't notice that when the door is completely full when I'm using the whole door but if I'm just using that little border that goes around the door then you would see that. Again you're looking at the back side of that 
that uh, page, the fourth page, and you can see you can see the back of the door from there, and then you can also see how I have trimmed out that opening with the door, and I've done the same thing. I've used the pieces of the hinges on each side of that just to make sure that all the paper is covered and it looks like a complete door. Then I've got a balloon and another one of the steampunk people. Now on the fifth page, um, you can see I've got my little steampunk guy with his wings, and we already talked about how I trimmed out that opening and also about the train. There are two balloons, one from the image set, but the other balloon is made from a silicone mold that I use clay. Now I use polymer clay, which has to be baked, but you could use paper clay if you would like. And what I did to kind of antique it a little bit is I, um, after I painted it the colors, then I rubbed it with uh, some of the uh, vintage photo distressed ink, and then that kind of uh, made it a little bit more shabby looking, a little bit more uh, vintage like the rest of the book. On the back side of that page, of course, the same trimmed opening, you can see another one of the balloons made from the clay. And notice the train. Now the train, I started it on one side and then went all the way around to the other side. And you can also see I've done the same thing with the wheels. I've added some metal bits on that just to jazz those up and pop it up. And then notice the back side of the steampunk guy's wings. So again, just like with the guy on the bicycle, I had to print the wings and I had to print a little bit of his arm and a little bit of the suitcase and stick that to the back. So you can see how I'm overlapping things just very slightly, and then I'm adding the reverse of the image to the back side so that it looks the same coming and going. And then you can also see another one of the steampunk doors and then the uh, balloon above that. For the back page, I kind of just went with what the paper looked like. I loved the scene, it was really beautiful. The only thing that I really did is I bought two pack paper packs so that I would have lots of paper and then also I would have lots of things that pop out on the paper. So I basically had two pages of this so I used one to cover the back of the paper or cover the, the, the front of the last page and then I cut out all the balloons that were on that page and popped those up to give it a dimensional look. And I did the same thing with the Bon Voyage uh, banner as well. On the back side, I used an image of the clock. It's the same clock I used for the front page paper. Again, because I had two packs, I had two clocks. And then I decided to do a gear collage in the center. And the very center of it is made up of a, uh, a gear clock that uh, was made with a mold. And you can see here what the mold looks like. It's got tons of these on it. And the, everything from clocks to clocks with gears to just round gear things. And so I basically made that out of the polymer clay and then painted it and then added a layers of uh, real metal gears as well as uh, a couple of items, uh, gears from the silicone mold. And then I also used one of the sheets of paper, has a whole bunch of clocks and round gear images and whatnot. And so I put the paper images behind and then also dressed some of that up using um, some of the uh, metal gears just to make it, those look more dimensional too. Now looking at the outside spine, of course I wanted to do something with that and not just leave it plain. So I cut out a bunch of the uh, hinges and I put those at the tops and the bottom so they actually overlap into the inside of the book. And then there's lots of really nice sayings on all the papers, things like adventures waiting for those who dare to dream, that sort of thing. And so I cut out a lot of those different phrases and whatnot and then glued those in the center just to kind of dress up the book. And now there's a couple of views of looking through the book from the front um, with the uh, door open, the steampunk door in the back open so that you can see all the way through to the back or with the door still closed, you can see. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to capture that in the picture. In real life, you get a better look because you have a little bit better lighting than I was able to do to, to so you could see in through there. But it gives you a really cool look. And you know, I've got those little bitty images overlapping, a little bit of metal here, a little bit of a person here, a wing here, a little bit of the bicycle. Um, and then of course, if you have the door closed, then you can see that as well. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that I've given you some ideas about how maybe you could make your own tunnel book and I will be posting another video after this uh, in a few weeks that will cover making an Alice in Wonderland book. It's going to be a little bit smaller, a six by six, so that can give you some more ideas of how to decorate a, one of these books. And then on the description area below, you're going to see a link to my blog and on my blog there is uh, a... a way to see more pictures so that you don't have to scroll through the video if you just want a closer look at something. And then also the supply list which will include everything that I've used and talked about as well as the molds and the paper and of course all of the collage sheets and digital image kits.